environment lights with HDR reflections take a lot of time to render in After Effects, and after times, you just don't have the time, right? In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add reflections that render fast. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. I created the animation in 9x16, so I adjusted my workspace a little. <laughs> the composition window is on the right, while the timeline, the effect and properties windows are on the left. My comp is 5 seconds long by the way, 24 frames per second. Let's start with the first shape. We double click on the rounded rectangle tool to add the shape, then adjust the size. Deactivate constraint proportions and set the size to 900 by 500 pixels. Let's set the roundness to 50. Then we turn it into a 3D layer. You can now change the renderer here directly in the timeline, which we do, we use the advanced 3D renderer. It allows us to extrude shapes to create real 3D objects. You can change the renderer as well in the composition settings under 3D renderer. In geometry options, we set the bevel depth to zero and the extrusion depth to 15. Now let's choose the orbit around cursor tool and rotate the scene. You can see the depth of the shape. Next, let's assign colors to the back and front and the sides. We go into the contents group and select the rectangle one group. That's the shape we want to colorize. Let's click on the add menu. We go to the front and choose color and repeat that for the side and the back. Then we choose white for the front and the back and black for the side. The reason why exactly these two colors, you'll see soon. In material options, we turn off the three options, cast shadows, accepts shadows and accepts lights. Now let's create the shape material and reflections with two solids. Let's create the reflections on the side. We add a new solid, command or control Y and name it side. Color doesn't matter, we add it with the effects. Let's create a texture first though, with the turbulent noise effect. I use the effects and presets window to search the effect and add it. Let's increase the contrast to around 700 and maybe slightly reduce the brightness to minus 10. In transform, let's scale it up to around 350 and let's reduce the complexity to one. Then we animate the evolution with an expression. Hold Alt while clicking on the stopwatch symbol. Then we add time asterisk 50. That increases the evolution value continuously by 50 per second. Next, let's colorize the texture with Tritone. Let's quickly add it through the effects and presets window. We choose three colors. I go for a very bright rose for the highlights a quite pink orange for the midtones, and the shadows a very dark purple. We want this to be the side reflections of our shapes. To assign the texture, we add the set matte effect. Here it is, you can also find it under effect and channel. Choose shape layer one, a source, and use the alpha channel. If you option click on the color management settings menu here, it shows you the alpha channel of the layer, which is all of the shape. Next, we add another solid. Command or control Y again, which we name front back. To colorize this solid, we use a gradient ramp effect. Here it is. Let's choose two colors, like rose and a dark purple. One of my favorite color combinations at the moment. Let's roughly position the start and end point. We'll fine tune the positions later. To assign it to the front and back of the 3D shape, we use the set matte effect again. Let's add it. We take the matte from the shape layer again. This time, we use the luminance for our matte. And that's only the white parts of the shape, which is the front and back. Rotate the shape and you'll see it actually covers the front and back. 
because the two solids are 2D layers and the front and back are above the side texture in the layer stacking order. Now, let's position the shape. Press P to open the position property, then Shift R to add the rotation property. I figured out these values before. The position 420, 1040, and 40. The orientation is 325, 320, and 10 degrees. This looks different from the original because we rotated the whole scene earlier. So we need to reset the view under view and reset default camera. That looks much better. To add more shapes, we select all three shapes and duplicate them. Command or Control D and move them to the top. Then remember to update the source in the two set mat effects to the new shape layer, shape layer two in this case. Press P and Shift R to open the two properties we need. The position of this shape, 460, 940, the orientation, 325, 320, and 25 degrees. Now you should fine tune the gradient positions in the front back solids. Move the bright start to the left side and the darker end towards the right. Repeat this a few times to add more shapes and adjust the gradient colors if you want. Before animating the shapes, let's clean the timeline up. We set the shy switch for all solids. We don't need to see them in the timeline because we only animate the shape layers. Hide the layers by activating the shy switch. So much better. Then let's select all the shape layers, press P to open the position properties, then Shift and R to add the rotation properties. We go to three seconds and with the layers still selected, set keyframes for all position properties and orientation properties. If you now press U twice, only the properties with keyframes are visible. Then we go to the beginning and move all shapes to the same start position. Make sure all shapes are selected, the position 540, 1050, 2000. The orientation 0, 270, 90 degrees. Then let's ease the animation in the graph editor. Make sure edit speed graph is selected and snap is activated. We select all points, add easy ease in in a first step, then slow down the end of all animations as much as possible by dragging all handles as far to the left as possible. That's the first part of the animation. And you can see it renders pretty fast compared to lights and shadows. I use a MacBook M1, by the way. And you can instantly see the final result. Let's slightly offset the animations. We leave the keyframes of the middle shape at three seconds, move the keyframes of the shape left and right of it a few frames to the left to two seconds and 17 frames. Then move the two outer shapes to two seconds and 10 frames. Let's check it out. Awesome. Then we go to five seconds and add the end positions of the shapes. We rotate them to the right. Maybe let's tilt them forward as well. Then add minus 2000 as set positions for all the shapes. This time for each shape separately because we want to keep the individual X and Y positions. Finally, we open the graph editor again, and this time we slow down the beginning of all animations as much as possible. We move the left points down to the zero line and drag all the handles as far to the right as possible. Check out this tutorial on the left if you want to know how I created the background light. 
Thanks so much for watching this video. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Happy creating!